Welcome back to the Rebellious Media Conference. This is the first of our pop-up studio shows in the courtyard here in the Friends Meeting House in Euston, London. I'm talking to Ian Bone, who is an anarchist blogger. Um, Ian, tell me what an anarchist blogger does. Um, blogs and tries to get as many people as possible to look at it and generally inspire people to insurrectionary activity all over the world and overthrow society as we know it today. Apart from that, not a lot. Have you got many hits? Um, average about seven or 8,000 a day, yeah. So that's quite a lot. Um, so it's you taken a long time to get there. That's like a three years to gradually build up. It don't happen overnight. Yeah. How did you build that up so that other people can... Uh, just by doing I started off in Bristol about three and a half years ago, just by friends, first of all, gradually acquaintances, political acquaintances. Then people start hitting on you outside. You find some interesting stuff to talk about. It just takes a long time to build up and get a regular audience. And you do have to post regularly. It's no good just posting once every week or something. I tend to post about three or four times a day, and it's like, it's like an addiction to it. And you can see how many people are looking at it, so you get that sort of feedback all the time. So that sort of encourages you to get on. There's no deferred gratification, you know, you get it instantly. So where I was involved with newspapers before, it takes you ages to have a thought, transmit it into print with a blog that's out there, shared with the world. So do you, do you get uh, trolls and, you know, American rednecks kind well, of... Are stalkers, there are people who accuse me of ruining the anarchist movement and want me to die and all the bigoted cunt I am and... Um, and all that kind of stuff. There's about 20 regular stalkers. They were signing around about 3.15 a.m. and vents their spleen and this, that and the other. And then, why don't you reply to me? Why do you always delete my comments? Well, you know, I want to fill my blog up with people saying I'm a total arsehole. Well, you know, do I really? So, so have you got guidelines which say that people... No, no, people can post it. They can put any comment up, but I do moderate it. It's not free for all. Otherwise, it'd be full of total rubbish, like, you know. So, yeah, I moderate all the ones which slag off other... Uh, good debate, but the ones who call other people posting, you know, cunts or this, I don't post those up either. It's got to be a bit more sophisticated an argument than that. And that's only by that way you build up a decent audience. I put totally contrary views, and people opposing what I'm saying and think I'm an idiot. But, you know, not sort of death threats and this, that and the other. And what session were you in today, and how did that go? I um, did a session on local media. Uh, uh, I was involved with a couple of newspapers in Swansea and Bristol in the 70s or 80s, which were basically uh, anti-corruption, muckraking journals. who have got a couple of council leaders sent to jail and so on. So I was sort of advocating muckraking, getting the gutter news of the world journalism as against sort of wholesome, you know, wholesome lefty kind of journalism which no one wants to read. Do you have a name for, for, for your type of anarchism or, or well, it's definitely class based it's class struggle anarchism but it's not industry based it's basically insurrectionary class struggle anarchism I call it you know I think in my age I want to get a move on or an insurrection I haven't got time these days to be beating away for 30 years flogging pamphlets on the street I'd like to see something before I go some results for 40 fucking years like Someone says, that my kids say to me, if you was a business, you'd have been closed down years ago for being totally, <laughs> totally inefficient. Oh, well, uh, three or four days. Three or four days, pretty efficient. Anyway. Yeah, but it's just very therapeutic, posting stuff up, you know. You know so sometimes you get some really good stories which are quite exclusive. Mostly the stuff people really hit on aren't, aren't the sort of breaking story. There's something more insightful, a bit more giving of yourself and making yourself more vulnerable and giving something of yourself. People really like that. You wouldn't think they do. When you make yourself a bit vulnerable all the time thinking about this or this, other, that's the ones that get the really big hits. And have the corporate media picked up more on you uh, since the blog? Or so, oh, no, really, it's a mutual thing. I, I plagiarise stuff as well. I always look at the other national newspapers in the morning. So I'll pinch stuff off them and give it a distance. You know, they, they, this Liam Fox stuff that's going on there. I ran a story in the Bristolian about four years ago called Liam the Liar, not detailing this friendship, but lots of other stuff he lied about, like he was supposed to be best pals with Natalie and Bruglia and so on, which is all total bollocks. And they picked the, some of the Sundays today, I've got some of that information on which they've lifted off my site, but so what? Like, you know. So thanks, Ian, and we'll be back in the pop-up studio here in the courtyard.